द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऑन 15 फरवरी 2017 डिसाइड टू अमल कमेट और मर्ज द फाइव असोसिएट्स ऑफ द स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया with itself after association or after the merger the associated banks would lose their separate identity and they will be known as as the state bank of india earlier the finance minister of india mr arun jaitley said that the state bank of india would become a global player after the merger he added that the amalgamated state bank of india would control more than 25% transaction of india or more than 25% transactions taking place in india there is an element of unconstitutionality in it in this connection it must be noted that that india must envisage every state government or every state as another japan south korea hong kong or singapore for this all financial institutions like the banks public sector banks and other institutions like life insurance corporation of india must be split and handed over to the respective state governments the other public uh, public sector undertakings also must be split or divided and hand it over to the state governments as far as possible for instance the bsnl could be split and hand it over to the respective state governments moreover there could be separate foreign exchange account for every state government there is nothing strange in it because the private industries or private companies are allowed to maintain separate foreign exchange accounts in such a scenario even if one state government falls the entire nation will not fall on the other hand in a in an unitary type if the central government fall, falls the entire entire nation would fall the economic consequences of merger also must be noticed now the associates of the state bank of india are the subsidiaries of the state bank of india like the state bank of trango lend 90% of their deposits in their respective regions and only 
about 10 percent goes out of their regions. On the other hand, the State Bank of India extracts a huge amount of money from the public and siphons off 90 percent of the deposits to Mumbai. They just lend just 10 percent of their deposits in their localities. Thus, State Bank of India causes greater economic deprivation than the other banks. Further, the associates banks have a heritage value. For instance, State Bank of Trangor is reminiscent of the Trangor Kingdom. And this name must be conserved. Furthermore, the small farmers are not getting sufficient money from the State Bank of India. In fact, the State Bank of India is relatively un, relatively not accessible to the small farmers. Only big farmers get some benefits from the State Bank of India. In these conditions, why should the government amalgamate the banks? The reason is simple. Some manipulators do not want to stand before all banks. They want to remove the entire money through one counter. When the present man, when I reported this to the union government about 10 years ago, the union government then retracted. It did not get sufficient strength to amalgamate the banks. Now, the present government has taken up this matter with single-minded devotion and it has taken the final decision also. This is out and out unconstitutional. This matter was reported to the Supreme Court of India several times. The Supreme Court of India should have prevented this. If it is not visible of compliance, Supreme Court of India can even allow the people to know the points against the merger. It is not doing this. This enables the union government to continue with the exploitation. This is like breaking the spirit of the people. Therefore, the Supreme Court of India, the President of India, Union Government and all political leaders must join together and put an end to the amalgamation proportion. It has already been approved by the Union Government, yet it must be prevented. The State Bank of Trivangur must exist as State Bank of tomorrow, Trivangur today, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Thank you.